Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. This weekend... <laughs> this weekend, I'm sure that you, like me, were horrified by the scale of the devastation in Florida. Our hearts go out to everyone down there. What they really need is our support. So if, if you want to donate, we have pinned a list of charities to the top of our Twitter page, at Colbert Late Show. Thankfully, help is already on the way. President Biden has approved an emergency declaration for Florida, and federal aid has been made available to the state. Well, thank goodness. The roads down there are a mess. People's homes are destroyed. And all that's left of Epcot are the boring parts. <laughs> otherwise known as Epcot. <laughs> anyway, FEMA is on the case, and things will hopefully start to get better soon. No thanks to Florida's congresspeople. On Thursday and Friday, the House and the Senate both approved a bill that included over $18 billion to help states with natural disasters. So you might be surprised who voted against it. All 16 GOP members of Florida's congressional team <laughs> and Florida Senator Rick Scott seen here screaming, Avada Kedavra! <laughs> Florida's other senator, Marco Rubio, was not present for the vote. Really? Normally, he's so easy to find. Marco! <laughs> the hurricane has briefly taken the focus off of former president, the Scam DeLorean. <laughs> of course, he doesn't like that, so he lashed out this weekend on social media against Senate Minority Leader and love child of Beaker and Bunsen Honeydew. Wow. Mitch McConnell. Wow! Nice, wow. isn't it? That's scary. See, <laughs> McConnell's voter to keep the government operating, which the former president evidently opposes, leading him to write of McConnell, he has a death wish. And a lot of people saw that as a threat, but the former president's spokesperson insisted, no, the reference to a death wish was political rather than literal. Okay. <laughs> but it's never great when you have to clarify that your death wish is a metaphor. <laughs> I want this mob to march on my opponent's house, figuratively, <laughs> which is metaphorically at 471 Pinecone Road and leave a severed horse's head in his bed as an allegory <laughs> for his head. <laughs> Former president continued by going after McConnell's wife, who was his transportation secretary, Elaine Chow saying McConnell must immediately seek help and advise from his China-loving wife, Coco Chow. <laughs> what the hell could that possibly mean? There are only two explanations. One, that's overt racism. Or two, he's saying she's kibble for Conan O'Brien. <laughs> As usual, other Republicans pretended they didn't hear anything offensive. CNN's Dana Bash asked Rick Scott what he thought. This appears racist. Is that okay? I hope no one is racist. I hope no one says anything that's inappropriate. Too late. <laughs> hope all you want. <laughs> the racism already happened. It's like riding on a headstone. I hope Bill didn't die. <laughs> Speaking of the former president's allies, Vladimir Putin. Last week, he forced four regions of occupied eastern Ukraine to hold sham votes in favor of joining Russia. And on Friday, he gave this big speech announcing Russia would officially annex them. Congratulations, guys! You're now part of Russia, so you can enjoy Russia's national pastime, fleeing Russia. <laughs> in his speech, Putin boasted about how powerful Russia is. Russia is a great millennial power. Oh, Russia is a total millennial. They're depressed, they're spiraling into debt, and they love avocado toast, <laughs> which in Russia is potato. <laughs> now, they remembered. They remembered. Now, you're probably saying, Steve, this is crazy, but at least he didn't seal the deal by doing a weird hand pile with all the fake leaders of his new fake provinces. Well, person I just made up, you are wrong. <laughs> Holy shorty! <laughs> is that Putin in the middle, or was it take your creepy little son to work day? 
It looked weird, but... It looked weird, but it got weirder. I can't quite hear what that is. It's all muddled, Jim. Can we hear what they're chanting? Jim, turn up the audience mics. Wow, everyone wants Aaron Judge to hit 62. That's incredible. That's... Pitch to him. He also made this sweeping decree. I want everyone to remember this. The people living in Luhansk and Donetsk and Kherson and Zaporizhia have become our citizens forever. That's right, forever. Or several minutes, whichever comes first. <laughs> because while Putin was speaking, Ukrainian forces were retaking the strategic city of Liman. It's just like the old saying. Sure, why not? It's just like the old saying, when life gives you limons, Ukrainian forces will crush you and take them back within 24 hours. That's not the only... That's not the only major Ukrainian advance. Today, they also overran Russian forces in recently annexed Kherson, Ukraine. Ukraine is taking territory back so quickly, locals didn't have time to learn that they had been annexed. This is true. When one resident was informed she was briefly Russian, she replied, I didn't hear anything about it. <laughs> it's funny to me because it recalls a saying, without me, they married me. <laughs> wow. Eastern European sayings are so sad. <laughs> As they say, don't throw out the baby with bathwater. You waste perfectly good baby soup. I said sad. <laughs> I did warn you that they're all very sad. There's a technical reason the Russian army's getting its ass kicked. It sucks. <laughs> According to one Ukrainian unit commander, the Russian troops he's faced have been wearing flip-flops and even saw two Russian soldiers who had only one gun between them. <laughs> Sergei, Sergei, we discussed this. On Tuesdays, I hold gun, you hold bullets. Tomorrow, I wear flip, you wear flop. <laughs> okay? No, give me a gun. Give me a gun. <laughs> now, drop what you're doing, ladies and gentlemen, and focus up right here, because there has been a devastating scandal in the world of sport. At a fishing tournament in Cleveland on Friday, a duo that had been declared winners were caught cheating. Of course, this was fishing. So after they were caught, they were released. <laughs> I didn't realize... I didn't realize I deserved that. Thank you so much. You're very generous. Now, it's a lakeside fishing scandal so explosive, many are calling it Watergate. I am not a carp. They well, punched that carp. They punched that carp. It's very nice. The uh, controversy happened at the Lake Erie Walleye Trail Championship, where judges grew skeptical when five fish, estimated to be about four pounds each, weighed in at nearly 34 pounds. I guess you could say the judges smelled something... suspicious. Here's the moment they got caught trying to cheat their way to a $28,000 prize. We got weights and fish! There we go! Oh, oh, get the out of here! Pull the cops! 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 That got real heated real fast. <laughs> Although, to be fair, every parking lot in Ohio comes with a stockpile of angry dads in Bass Pro Shop hats. <laughs> am I drunk or am I just like this? <laughs> this is obviously about something deeper. Maybe my dad, he was so angry and I'll never know why I'm so angry. I feel like I have lead weights inside of me. Weigh me. Somebody weigh me. I can't be this heavy. <laughs> ah! Ah! 
These cheaters weren't just juicing the fish with lead. Take a look. A filleted fish. This is a fillet, yeah. Walleye fillet. They put fish inside their fish. You can see it all in the new Disney classic, Finding Nemo, stuffed with other Nemos. We got a great show for you tonight. The creator of Veep and Avenue 5, Armando Iannucci, is here. But when we come back, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi.